Hello everyone, and welcome to part 2 of a Modbus tutorial using Flat Code version 9. If you've seen part 1, then you know I'm using an ESP32 board connected via Wi Fi to a Flat Code App Creator, and I'm using Flat Code App Creator to control the ESP32 board. Modbus provides several um, several different means of um, storing data. Generally the slave will make all the data available and the master will then either write to that data or read from that data. In my program today I've modified things slightly. Before I had a simple LED that I could switch on and off. Now I've added a few more things. So I've drawn up a little circuit of what I've got connected here on my hardware. I have my LED on GPIO 26 and instead of just turning this on or off I want to be able to dim it, make it brighter or dimmer. I have a potentiometer connected to GPIO 32 and I want to be able to read the voltage uh, or the uh, analog representation of that voltage um, on, uh, on that pin. And I also have a simple switch um, here, uh, which is connected to GPIO 14. So what have I done to my um, embedded program for the ESP32? Well it's fairly straightforward. On my panel I've added a, a potentiometer, so under component libraries inputs I've added a potentiometer black and I've also added a PWM channel, so under components, outputs, PWM, I've added a PWM. I've assigned um, the channel and the pin that the PWM is assigned to, so it's on A26, A should correspond with GPIO26 here, and my analog pin is on analog pin 4 which is GPIO pin 32 so again potentiometers GPIO 32 the switch I am just reading using a simple input icon but again I could have used a, a switch component to, to do that for me so have I modified my program well I've added a call to the PWM enable before my main loop Again, I've got the standard check for incoming to check for any messages from a master. If we s receive any messages, then what I'm doing is I'm checking uh, holding register 0 and I'm assigning the, the value from holding register 0 to my PWM duty. Also in my loop, I'm reading the state of GPIO 14 by this input icon and I'm assigning that to digital input uh, channel 0, address 0. I'm also getting the uh, integer value of my ADC using this call uh, getInt, storing that in a local variable called ADC and then writing that ADC variable to my analog input address 0. You can see that for my Modbus component I've uh, I've re-added um, an address for the analog input and an address for the holding register as well as an address for the digital input. I'm not using the coils today um, but I'll keep it there just in case I want to use it in the future. So that's my ESP32 program. How has the app developer program changed? I have that right here. In here I have added some um, nice sliders, so under component libraries controls I've added linear sliders I've changed them so that they're uh, vertical orientation I've changed the major and minor ticks so that they give uh, nice representations of the numbers uh, and not too crowded and not too sparse and I've also given them the uh, upper and lower bounds so the lower bound being hit zero and the upper bound being 1496. It's a 12-bit ADC, so the, the maximum value is, is actually 1495, but 1496 
gives us some nice numbers on the slider. So I've got two sliders, both having um, labels. These are created using the um, indicators static text to create labels. And then I also have this uh, switch item here, or item label switch, which is simply a logo indicator. Um, so this can display various logos as well as some simple colors such as red, green, amber uh, type things. So in my program, um, I'm getting the linear slider from the PWM slider. I'm um, assessing whether the value is is, is new or not, if, it, if it's been changed by the user. If it has been changed, then we'll write it to holding register zero, and we'll update our old variable so that we don't write it again the next time out of loop. I'll get from the slave analog input uh, address zero, and store that into, you see that when I do a read call, it actually returns, if I, if I look at the function here, it returns 0 for su success, 1 for a CRC fail and 255 for no reply. So I'm storing the return into variable in and then I'm checking to see if in is 0. If it's 0 then we know that the command has completed successfully. If it has completed successfully then I get the value of the analog input by using the get response byte or get response int. Now we know that the analog input, if I look back here, the analog input is a 16 bit value. So I'll call the get response int to get that 16 bit value as a single uint value that I've stored in the variable ADC. I'm using index 3 because index 3 is the location of the first um, section of data. Um, so 3 is data 0. If we were returning more than one value, then 5 would be data 1, 7 would be data 2, and, and, and so on. So I'm reading the analog input. If success, then we get that value and we assign it to our ADC slider. Similarly, with the digital input, I'm reading digital input, address 0. I'm only reading one channel, uh, so we can read multiple channels here if we want. If in is zero, so if the command is successful, then this time I'm getting the response byte. You can see that again uh, for the index, uh, the value of three is data zero and four would be data one. I'm storing that into variable switch. And then I've got a, um, a decision icon which says if switch, um, yes is not zero. So we will assign this to be green, I believe. And no is if it is zero, and then we'll, we'll assign this to be red. So if we look here, we can see what the actual values are. So we can see that four is green and six is red. So let's bring up the console window. Let's run this program. bring back my camera and you can see now that as I vary the, the PWM the LED gets brighter or dimmer you can, hard to see but you can see that the brightness is, is varying if I turn the potentiometer you can see that the ADC value goes up and down and if I flip the switch, you can see that my uh, logo indicator changes state to match. So this is a very simple uh, example of, of Modbus in use, uh, talking to a device, uh, and how we would go about getting data from that device and making use of the Modbus protocol. I hope you found this useful. I've been Ben Rowland, and this has been Flukud9.